We are awaiting a speech from presidential candidate Mitt Romney. He's expected soon at a rally in Pittsburgh. Now, as we told you earlier, he's also meeting today with former rival Rick Santorum. Here now to take a look at Romney's strategy in the road ahead, Hadley Heath, a senior policy analyst at the Independent Women's Forum, and Julie Rogensky, a Fox News contributor and former political advisor to New Jersey Senator Frank Lautenberg. Good to see you both this morning. Good to see you, Harry. Good morning. Uh, I want to start off by saying that 54% of the electric, uh, electorate rather, in the state of Ohio, which is where we've seen this president spend a lot of his time, and also uh, Mitt Romney, according to some exit polling, is working class. And the big focus this morning has been on reaching out to the working class voters. What is Mitt Romney's strategy for this? Well, uh, you know, it's a good question as to what Mitt Romney's strategy is for any working class people. I mean, he's, he's essentially espoused the same views that George Bush had in the last administration that has gotten, you know, our economy to where it is today, where the working class keeps suffering and the richest of the rich keep getting richer, and that's not class warfare, that's just the reality of what's going on with our economy today. You know, Mitt Romney did not support the bailout of the auto industry, that obviously is a huge industry affecting Ohio. Mitt Romney campaigned with John Kasich last year against a very widely defeated referendum on collective bargaining that really affected working class people. So in Ohio specifically, the last time we had a test between Barack Obama's worldview and Mitt Romney's worldview, which was the last election in 2011, Mitt Romney came up very short, overwhelmingly. The right. people of Ohio supported Obama's worldview with collective bargaining, for example, versus what Romney espoused. Uh, all right. And all of this, I, I want to mention uh, Mitt Romney in Pennsylvania today. There's some focus on that state, on Ohio and Florida, because they are swing states. Hadley, I want to get to you. Having said all of that from Julie, though, President Obama doesn't fare well with his class either. He lost in the primary to Hillary Clinton by a large margin, the working class vote, and then to John McCain in that same year, 2008. Right. By 18 points, he lost to John McCain. And I think certainly it's pretty clear the enthusiasm level among some voting blocks that typically would belong to President Obama is, has at least dropped. So some of those voters may not make it to the polls. But when it comes to working class voters, I think Mitt Romney really has to make the case that they can trust him on the economy. He's got a background in business and he can turn things around. Hadley, I want to stick with you for just a second and pop something up on the screen because I don't know if a lot of people know that Mitt Romney's dad, his father, George Romney, ran for president back in 1960. And in fact, one of the things he's remembered for doing, which was quite successful, was going around to 17 cities' urban areas and reaching out to the working class and shaking hands unscripted with real people. Is this something that might work for Mitt Romney, Hadley? It's something that might work for Mitt Romney, but I think it would be realistic for Republicans to also recognize this is a, a voting block, a group of people, white working class voters in states like Ohio and Michigan, that is going to be difficult for either Republicans or Democrats to capture in this moment. That's why you, you might have seen the Reuters poll that pointed out a lot of Republicans would suggest someone like Rick Santorum for vice president because he's someone who actually really, really did resonate with these blue collar workers. So I think it's okay for... Um, for both parties to recognize that this group of people is disillusioned with the direction of the country right now, uh, but they, they will be inspired by a message of hope. And if Mitt Romney can, can give them that message and, and inspire them towards real change in the, in the mm -hmm. next cycle, then he may be their man. All right, now back to Julie. Uh, the president has made 20 visits to Ohio since being president. Our brain room here at Fox News has come up with that research. So obviously, Ohio and that particular vote, votership is really important to him. Some Words now up on the screen from Mitt Romney's own press release this morning, which is written kind of like an open letter to the president. He says, President, forgive me for being blunt, but when it comes to economic affairs, you're out of your depth. He goes on to write, I've learned a thing or two about how government policies can kill private investment and stifle job creation, and I have a plan to get government out of the way. Your response to that? Well, he certainly learned a thing or two about it when he was governor. Massachusetts was 47th in job creation, so if Mitt Romney knows anything about being in government and killing jobs, Massachusetts is the perfect example as during his tenure of somebody that, you know, of, of a politician that's been able to effectively make his state virtually dead last in job creation when he was in charge. Look, Mitt Romney knows a thing or two about derivatives. He knows a thing or two about continuing the same policies that got us into this mess back in 2008. He knows a thing or two about moving us backwards to exactly the same kinds of policies 
that, uh, that, that'll have allowed people like Mitt Romney to basically gouge those same working class that he now wants to appeal to. You know, Hadley had a good point. You have people like Rick Santorum. I don't agree with him politically on a lot, but he can relate to people that actually have to work for a living as somebody who had to do that himself. Mitt Romney, I think, is, is, is perceived as being so out of touch with the working class, not just because right. of his own personal background, but because of his record as governor, which we, we notice he never, ever talks about. It's a pretty abysmal record. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. You're repeating yourself a little bit. Uh, uh, Ten seconds from you, Hadley, and then we'll wrap it up. Oh, sure. Well, these voters, understandably, could like the president personally. He's the beer summit president. He's somebody that everyone would pretty much like to go get a beer with to understand him more as a person. But frankly, this is not an election to determine who you want to have a beer with. This is an election to determine the next leader of the free world. And I think Romney's better suited for that. Well, two people I'd like to have a cup of coffee with joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you.